Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, uh, continuing with our uh, discussion on processing maps, uh, today I will like to take the uh, or discuss uh, some other different models. Okay. If you remember we have already discussed uh, dynamic materials model uh, given by YVRK Prasad okay, and co-workers, so that we have seen in details. Okay. Uh, today we will see some other models uh, which uh, some other researchers have proposed okay, and kind of some comparison between different models. So, some work uh, people have done on comparing these models and trying to correlate it with the microstructure. So, you will see that a uh, lot of different uh, um, ideas people have come up to suggest uh, a certain equation. Okay. And in some cases, the, these models are able to predict the uh, the the unsafe or uh, stable or unstable region for deformation processing okay, and which are like uh, validated with microstructure. So in some cases some model will or, or for some example in some material some model will be more uh, convenient or uh, will be able to more predict in better way. Okay. In some other material maybe some other model will be able to predict in a better way. So, there is no final word on uh, different models till now. Okay, people are still trying to and still proposing new ways to plot the processing map, or still proposing new models to to understand the deformation behavior. Okay, so as already we have discussed in DA model. Okay, the the stress is dependent on a strain rate. Okay. And there is a power law relationship already we have seen okay, a relationship like this. So, you can see that uh, this power law relationship the m is uh, supposed to be a constant. Okay. So, strain rate sensitivity is a constant here. Okay. So, they have assumed that strain rate sensitivity will remain constant in the strain rate range where they are trying to develop the model and this kind of relationship is called power law uh, behavior or power law relationship. However, if you are uh, considering a large strain rate range, okay, uh, then you will see that m does not remain constant. For a particular strain rate window, maybe you can take a strain rate as constant, but if you keep changing the strain rate over a large window, you will see that the strain rate does not remain constant and already I have told you that there is a power law breakdown also. That means, and the dependence on m will be uh, the stress dependence on strain rate sensitivity or strain rate will be uh, very small dependence will be there okay sensitivity will be very low so there will be a power law breakdown also and m also keeps changing as a function of a strain rate okay so to take this into account okay the another model proposed by uh, which is called as murthy and rao Okay, Narayan Murthy and Prasad Rao, they proposed another model which is called usually called as modified DMM okay. and they also proposed the both the parameter the efficiency, dissipation efficiency that how uh, uh, efficiently material is able to dissipate the power through microstructural change rather than only through heat okay. that is what we want. So, they have proposed uh, dissipation efficiency as well as the instability criteria. Okay. So, they have considered that the strain rate is going to change as a function of uh, uh, strain rate sensitivity, uh, sensitivity should come here. Okay. Varying as a function of strain rate. Okay. So, that is why uh, they have uh, taken a uh, integral here okay as you can see here okay and this is uh, eta murti and rao okay 
uh, where uh, they have proposed an equation like this. Okay. I am not going into detail of how they are coming up all these equations okay, because in, in these lectures we do not have time to go into detail of each model. Okay. But there are a uh, lot of research papers are available. So, if you are interested you can go to these uh, research papers and see the derivation of these models. Okay. Similarly, the instability criteria given by this model okay, uh, show, uh, gives the instability like this. If re you remember in case of Prasad and Trau, okay, where they have shown this as zeta. Okay. And in this case, uh, the instability criteria is slightly different, okay. uh, the 2 m divided by eta. So, efficiency is coming there and efficiency already we have seen they have calculated using a variable m. Okay. So, that part is coming here minus 1 should if it is less than 0, then it, it has a instability. Okay. So, uh, one another variation to the same uh, parameters, but looking in a different way. Okay. So, basically uh, they calculated j like this uh, total power minus g okay, and which is equal to sigma epsilon dot minus 0 to epsilon dot sigma d epsilon dot through that they have calculated this uh, efficiency. Okay. There is another instability criterion. Okay. This is proposed by uh, Poletti and group okay. and they said that uh, we means uh, not to consider the stranded sensitivity in the calculation. Okay. So, they calculated directly from the j co-content, okay. the j variation of j co-content as a function of uh, strain rate okay. and from there they calculated the instability parameter k j. Okay. So, another variation now uh, looking in a different way okay, uh, to avoid stranded sensitivity calculation there. Okay. There is another model okay, given by uh, one more group okay, uh, which is usually we call it as a, a Giegel model okay. and they use another uh, some thermodynamic function which is called Lyapunov function. Okay. And uh, using that, they propose two Lyapunov functions, okay, where uh, now they are using efficiency. So, del efficiency by del ln epsilon dot, if it is less than 0, and they introduce another uh, parameter here, okay, which is S parameter here. Okay. And what it the S parameter is? It is the Ten temperature sensitivity of flow stress okay, that how the flow stress is going to change as a function of temperature. Okay. So, they have introduced another factor here uh, which is uh, uh, temperature sensitivity of flow stress uh, and if you do some more uh, jugglery with the mathematics okay, you will come up with this particular. Uh, parameter for instability. Okay. So, one parameter is this, another parameter is this based on the temperature sensitivity. So, basically how the strain rate sensitivity is going to change as a function of temperature and how efficiency is going to change as a function of strain rate. So, both temperature and strain rate dependence is uh, taken uh, okay, as a function of instability. Okay. So, when it is less than 0, when efficiency change as a function of strain rate is less than 0, okay, that means it has a low efficiency, then it will be in instable region okay, or strain rate sensitivity as a function of temperature if, if it is uh, uh, less than 0, then again you will have uh, instability. Okay. So, another model uh, for instability. Another uh, model given by Malas uh, and workers. Okay. Uh, they replace eta with m in Giegel's criterion. Okay. So, if you see here they have said eta. So, in the next one now you can see that instead of eta they have replaced it by m. Okay. So, now it is a strain rate sensitivity change as a function of a strain rate if it is negative. Okay. Uh, and also the uh, one parameter which was introduced by Giegel which was the 
uh, sensitivity of flow stress to temperature okay, that, that is still there. Uh, so, S parameter is still there and uh, this is another parameter which is like a strain rate sensitivity as a function of strain rate. Okay. So, you can try to see that they, these are variations of the parameters okay, in different way they are looking at the problem in a different way and trying to come up with the instability criterion. Okay. So, Giegel if you see and Malas uh, yeah. if you see more or less same only the difference is that eta is replaced by m here okay, in the first equation. There is another uh, now a quite a change from uh, the calculations which were we doing. Okay, another one which is uh, proposed by Semiatin and Jonas. Okay, they have done lot of work on this. Now they have combined two material parameters here. Okay, so till now we are only seeing the important material parameter is the strain rate sensitivity, and only we are looking at the variation of strain rate sensitivity change as a function of different uh, variables. Okay. They said that uh, for any instability uh, when instability is there, okay, it also affects the strain hardening exponent. Okay. So, that is already we have seen in the room temperature deformation that whenever the strain rate hardening is not there okay, or a material has a lower strain rate hardening parameter then the instability can easily uh, initiate and it can uh, uh, it can grow as a function of a strain okay so strain hardening already we know this parameter strain hardening okay and strain rate hardening or you can say strain rate sensitivity both are same okay so gamma is your strain hardening coefficient and uh, m is coming as a strain rate sensitivity okay so they have introduced this parameter called alpha okay and whenever alpha is more than 5 okay you have a uh, instability okay and this particular value 5 th they have found out for titanium alloys okay so still it is not a universally applicable phenom uh, phenomena or or criterion okay because it has now this particular value has to be you have to determine for each material class okay that what is the uh, value of uh, alpha parameter is valid for that particular material okay so this is another instability criterion okay now we, we would like to compare these uh, uh, criteria okay with different uh, materials in different materials okay uh, i have taken the references and the reference is always shown in the bottom part here okay so this is a work on beta titanium alloys titanium 55531 okay and uh, three processing maps you can see here okay so eta the efficiency is calculated by uh, expression given by murthy and rao Okay, and uh, in this case, the instability is calculated by uh, the parameter which is given by polity. Okay, if you remember KJ, this particular processing map eta is calculated by Prasad's uh, calculation, the DMM model. Okay, and of course, zeta is the instability parameter. Okay, and the third processing map. Okay, eta is calculated again with Murthy and Rao, parameter efficiency is calculated by Murthy and Rao, the modified DMM okay, and the instability is also calculated by the uh, modified uh, dynamic materials model. Okay, so, these three maps with different instability criterion okay, is, uh, criteria is shown here. Okay. So, you can try to see that where the maximum efficiency you are getting in case of DMM model you are getting somewhere here and one here and this area is the instable area that is the lower temperature higher strain rate with uh, instability criteria and given by polity okay, uh, you can see the instable regions are here. Okay and the high efficiency regions are uh, somewhere here okay and somewhere here okay and one is given here also 
And in case of uh, Murthy and Rao, efficiency is again Murthy and Rao and uh, uh, instability is also from their model. Okay. Again, the of course, the efficiency will be same because in both the cases, the efficiency parameter is taken as same. But you can see the instability is over a very wide range in this case. Okay. Almost all the strain rates okay, above 10 to the power minus 2, okay, it is showing instability. Okay. So, all the strain rate above this for all the temperatures, whereas in this case you are looking at certain pockets. And now, they have done of course, microstructural analysis. Okay. By doing a microstructural analysis, they have also plotted a uh, deformation mechanism map kind of. Okay. So, you can see lower strain, lower temperature, higher strain rate. Higher strain rate uh, already we know that uh, there is a, a lot of chances of adiabatic heating. Okay. So, you see that there is an adiabatic flow that is the flow due to uh, adiabatic heating. Okay. Somewhere here you have deformation bends and CDRX also continuous dynamic recrystallization. This is the dynamic recovery in the beta field. Okay. This is your beta transient temperature and this is your uh, dynamic recovery in the beta field plus uh, geometric dynamic recrystallization. Okay, and the subgrain size they have shown to increase in this direction. That means going towards higher temperature and lower strain rates. Okay. So, subgrain size is increasing because temperature is higher, so more chance and strain rates are low. So, more chances of subgrain size uh, will tend to increase. Okay. And these are all done through this uh, uh, microstructural analysis here where you have continuous dynamic recrystallization, deformation bands and so on. Okay. And uh, looking at it, uh, if you compare, uh, maybe this DMM model is able to predict uh, uh, instability in this region, okay. the top region here matching with that. Okay. Some part of this also is matching somewhere here. Okay. Uh, whereas, if you see the, the modified DMM that is uh, showing uh, instability for a large range here, okay, which we are not able to see here. So, from this you can say that uh, uh, this dy dynamic materials model, the modified uh, dynamic materials model uh, is more conservative than other models. Okay. And, uh, if you see higher efficiency, of course, we are able to see dynamic recrystallization in this area where you have higher efficiency in all the cases. Okay. So, efficiency wise more or less uh, uh, both maps uh, whether we are creating with DMM or modified DMM, they are able to predict those areas where you are seeing dynamic recovery and dynamic recrystallization. Okay. Another work, uh, another comparison in ultra uh, high strength stainless steels. Okay. The models which are used are uh, Prasad's, okay. so, it is also called as Kumar and Prasad's okay. and one is by Malas, okay. already we have discussed that okay. and they have taken it as Alexander and Malas, okay. different groups uh, have proposed this. Okay. So, they are showing instability criteria from uh, Prasad's work, the DMM model, which is shown with red hatching here, okay. and also with the, the Malas instability criteria, which is shown with blue hatching. Okay. And again, uh, then they must have done microstructural analysis uh, at different conditions. Okay. And those conditions are uh, shown on the in the right one, uh, this particular micrograph. Okay, so these areas are uh, the the black the square uh, black field uh, uh, are the ones which are showing the dynamic recovery. So this is the area where you have dynamic recovery. Okay, then you have dynamic recrystallization. So one area here you can have as dynamic recrystallization. Okay. Then you have this area is uh, okay, full DRX okay. and then this one you see as grain growth. Okay. So, 
uh, if you compare with the instability criteria and both they are not able to uh, show the same instability criteria here okay uh, on instability conditions here because you are seeing either dynamic recrystallization or dynamic recovery in this case okay and of course at high temperature you are also seeing the grain growth which we saw in case of uh, work by polythi also that uh, the earlier work that the gray subgrain size is increasing as you are going to lower strain rate higher temperature so again here we are at lower strain rate higher temperature so here you see grain growth okay but more or less in uh, in this case uh, the instability regions are not uh, at least whatever they are reporting and whatever they are showing okay it is not being related with the microstructural analysis okay because both dynamic recovery and dynamic recrystallization we consider it as a safe uh, deformation region okay so we don't see a kind of that kind of instability here okay another work uh, uh, on uh, titanium alloy again okay and uh, they have compared murthy and rao's model dmm model of course prasad's model okay and malas model okay and uh, what they have also done here that all these uh, instability regions were plotted at different strain levels okay so the strain levels are from 0.1 to 0.7 okay at the interval of 0.1 okay so the you can see a lot of overlapping uh, uh, maps are there okay and as the overlapping is increasing it is becoming darker and darker okay that means the instability uh, is either reducing or increasing as a function of strain okay so that is what they are trying to show so if you see the the dmm model okay the instability is in starting from a lower strain rate okay and then going like some kind of diagonally to towards the higher strain rate as a function of temperature okay so at lower temperature at lower strain rate also you have instability and then it is going towards the as you are going toward higher temperature the instability is shifting towards higher strain rates okay if you see the murthy and rao model also okay again the the behavior is more or less same okay uh, maybe because both are based on strain rate sensitivity calculation okay so you can see that again the behavior is like this whereas for model given by malas okay who considered uh, also the effect of temperature on flow stress okay their model uh, more or less all the boundaries are kind of covered with the instable region okay and uh, the central part is uh, shown as the safe region okay and of course again they they have also done a microstructural analysis okay where they are showing different zones okay so here low temperature high strain rates you will have crack uh, initiation or cracking in the material okay again low temperature high strain rate you have uh, adiabatic shear band formation area okay then you have at lower strain rate okay as you go towards higher temperature you have spherodization so all, already we have discussed that spherodization is also a, a, a safe region to operate okay it is a high it should be related to the high efficiency region okay and um, Uh, basically your acicular type of structure gets spherodized you becomes globular okay so like a dynamic recrystallization and as you go uh, i think beta this must be the beta transverse temperature so you have dynamic recrystallization in the beta phase okay and the, the, in this particular zone you have beta instability okay so if you see more or less both dmm and uh, modified dmm model of murthy and rao okay they both are able to predict this instability very nicely of course they are not able to predict the instability in the upper region that is the lower temperature and highest strain rate okay where in the microstructure it is showing uh, cracking okay if you see the malas model of course it is not able to predict the these the instability correctly 
okay, because it is showing of course, the cracking where the crack formation is taking place and which could not be predicted by both DMM and MDMM that one was could be predicted by the MALAS model. Okay. But uh, the high instability in this region is not uh, corroborated with the microstructural analysis. Okay. So, you can see that different models uh, sometimes are able to predict some features may not be other features. Okay. In some cases they, be, uh, they are conservative, in some other cases they may not be conservative. Okay. And it all depends on the, how the material behavior is there how the strain rate sensitivity is there, how the flow sensitivity is there to the temperature, to the strain rate. Okay. So, all these parameter, the material parameter kind of affects the, uh, the how uh, the generation of the processing map and uh, every time any processing map we when we generate it has to be validated by microstructural analysis okay, to confirm whether we are able to get the same efficiency instability in the microstructure also. Okay. This is some of our work, uh, this is uh, again PhD thesis of uh, one of the student Kuldeep Saxena. Okay. So, uh, in, th in our work we have compared in the zirconium niobium alloys. Okay. So, uh, the alpha parameter given by Jonas and Semiatin okay. and of course, modi modified DMM by Murthy and Rao and DMM model by Prasad et al. Okay. Uh, that is what we have taken and you can also see as we have seen in case of earlier work also that the, the modified DMM is more conservative here okay. uh, again showing very high instability in the all the strain rate above 10 to the power minus 1. Okay. Uh, if you compare the DMM model with the, the alpha parameter both are able to predict uh, uh, instability in the lower temperature region and higher strain rate. Okay. So, that is that is clear in both. Okay. However, in DMM model there is another one instability region is shown at lower strain rate okay, and also lower temperature okay. and uh, more or less uh, the, the high efficiency regions are these and these. Okay. So, that is also can be seen in the uh, modified DMM model. Okay. So, again different approaches, different ways of plotting the, uh, the processing map. Okay. Uh, again, we can also try to do the microstructure analysis, I will show you that. Okay. For example, this is another work on 2.5 niobium, zirconium 2.5 niobium. Okay. Uh, again, the comparison is there between the DMM model, modified DMM model and alpha parameter at two different strain level again it is plotted as we have seen in previous works also. Uh, as you go from 0.3 to 0.6, you can see there are some changes in the, the instability regions as well as the efficiency region. As you can see at lower strain, okay, only instability is here but as you go to higher strain the instability is coming in these regions. Okay. Efficiency if you see you are getting high efficiency in these regions okay. and uh, similarly at low strains also the efficiency is high in these regions. Okay. Uh, again if we compare with the modified uh, dynamic materials model given by Murthy and Rao. Okay, the instability is shown in the middle part okay, and as you go to high strain uh, all the strain rates above 10 to the power minus 1 you, you can see the instability. In alpha parameter the instability is extending at lower strain it is a, in a small window, but at high strain it is extending for the all the strain rate range. Okay. Now, if you compare with the, with the microstructures. Okay, uh, uh, we are taking this uh, DMM model here okay. and from there we are taking the sample where we have high efficiency, where we have instability. Okay. So, the red dots are showing you the instability is also observed in the microstructure, whereas the yellow dots are showing you the that there are no instability in the microstructure. So, for example, from the model it says that it there should be an instability at 900 degree Celsius and strain rate of 
10 to the power 1 okay but we don't see uh, any instability at that uh, condition but other uh, condition we are able to get instability as predicted by the processing map okay and those are uh, you can see uh, the processing conditions are also shown here okay so for example you have voids formation here okay also some type of cracking at higher strain uh, strain rates okay at higher strain rate I can see cracking here also uh, whereas you can see uh, adiabatic shear band formation at uh, strain rate of 1 okay and uh, at, uh, at uh, lower strain rates okay you can see the microstructures are actually the microstructures are not very clear the reason is that in zirconium niobium alloy there is a there is a martensitic transformation when you quench the material okay so because these are deformed at higher strain uh, higher temperatures okay in some cases it has gone into beta phase okay so when you quench from beta phase there will be a martensitic transformation and that uh, kind of uh, covers the the actual microstructure which might have been there during the deformation process okay but at least i cannot see instabilities in these uh, microstructure whereas the microstructure from the instable region of the processing ma map i can see that there are few instabilities are there okay this is the comparative table for for that uh, uh, previous slide okay that where you can have instable region and so on Okay, and which particular uh, uh, model is able to predict uh, uh, correctly. Okay, so, that uh, is shown in the last uh, column here okay, whether DMM is the one which is able to predict this particular region in another region DMM all the three parameters or models are able to predict the partial recrystallization at this particular processing condition. Okay. So, like that it is all uh, uh, kind of uh, summarized in, in a table okay. and th the work is taken from the from a from a paper okay. our own work is there. Uh, so, if you want some details you can go to this paper also and uh, for other models and other work also I have uh, shown you the, the, the source from by which I have taken it okay. and if you actually see uh, the work which is being carried out in high temperature deformation or thermomechanical deformation. Uh, huge amount of work on processing map, constitutive equation development for e each class of materials okay, and comparison of different models, okay, di comparison of different constitutive equations. So, there is a huge amount of work which is there. Okay. So, I cannot of course, uh, take all this uh, in a, a small lecture like this. Okay. So, I would encourage if you are interested to go uh, and look for these publications okay, and this lecture can serve as a, as a introductory lecture for you. Okay. So, with that uh, uh, thank you for your attention.